the students in the today's lecture we will discuss about the magnet operational constant so what are the things that creating any problem for the operation of the magnet we will discuss the first thing is magnet is very constrained to power related issue because we have very limited power in our system and the magnet operation performs in the continuous manner like the sending of data and the forwarding of data sensing of data so there is lot of power consumption so power related issues are there over the magnet then second one is security related issue also because it is not topology dependent protocol so due to this there is no fixed security or the cryptographic mechanism which ensures that there is a secure communication between the sender and the receiver then low storage why it is called low storage because in the real time fashion while particular packet is passed one entity to another so there is a routing method over there like a gateway so in this there is a storage in order to store the path as well as sometimes the data also but in this case in the magnet environment in the magnet environment there is no storage available at the intermediate node if the storage is available but it is not useful for the networking operation system also low processing capabilities so the processing capability of the router between one node to the another node is high as compared to any intermediate magnet node because these are equipped with the proper battery backup they have a high processor but in our smartphones or we can say any magnet environment node do not have high processing capabilities if they equipped with a high processing capability then it will utilize lot of power as well as uh, it has to be equipped with the extra storage in order to process all of the tasks so and bandwidth will get utilized more in that case so that's why the processing capabilities are there over the magnet environment in the nodes that are uh involved in the topology of mobile data network that fluid and core packet due to broadcast so there are so many routing algorithms available in the magnet environment so in the lsr that is selling the state routing protocol the vision functionality is after creating the packet when there is incompletion this packet has to be broadcasted over the network these two things now my network is constrained to power related issues security related issues to no storage and no processing and also one another factor is coming out that is fluding and if the fluding is uh, happening over there in the mobile network network environment then it will be very hazard here also because as i told you in the mobile node of network the nodes are communicated with each other with topology independent manner so the node cannot uh, justify or node cannot assure that after some time this particular node will be situated over there in order to transmit its data so that's why in this case if any particular node is uh, getting vanished from the environment then what happens there is a need of hello messages or you can say the beacon messages there is a need of beacon messages in order to recognize the presence of particular node in the neighboring environment such that the data can be transmitted otherwise if the hello message or the echo packet is not coming back to the particular sender node then it assumes that that particular node is not 
uh, currently active in the network and it has to be communicated to another node in order to perform the data transmission. So there are a lot of overheads like choosing this beacon and the another one is the beacon message. But because the beacon message is a dummy type of packet, so the overhead is not so much high. But choosing of packets will get overhead in a very high manner. So these are the open research challenges. So if you want to do any research over this topic that is known by the rock network, so you can do that. Now the next topic is applications of managed environment. So there are so many applications. In the first application of the managed environment is the environmental monitoring. So as I told you in my last class that the managed environment is used in the agriculture activity so it is comes under the category of environmental monitoring so in the environmental monitoring the first one is the sensor has to be deployed over a particular remote location then the data has to be collected. So data collected data collection from remote location. So like this is your remote area in which particular nodes are deployed and the functionality of these nodes are to sense the data. So once this is sensed, the data has to collect the data and make the storage. Then also monitoring of the security managed can be used. Like in a small place, if you monitor the security or the presence of any unknown node or any unknown uh, activity over there, then you can deploy the managed environment. Also, in the traffic monitoring, Manage can be utilized. So for the traffic monitoring on the roads, this managed node will become vacular hoc network that is called vanish. So in this, suppose there is a particular road and there is a one uh, vehicle is going on, one is there and another one is there. So in order to perform the communication, this will send the data to this one in the form of text because there is no uh, facility available for the processing or the high processing capabilities over there. So currently the text is forwarding from one node to the another node. Also in the forest area it can be used like sensor communication. That detects animals in the forest. So the same scenario can be understood as a forest. These are nodes that are deployed and it is acts as a mobile network network. So once there is a animal present over there and this activity is radiation is sensed by this sensor, so it has to forward this data over the cloud. So because the range of this node is not so much high, so it has to follow some protocols like the routing protocols. So it has to send the data first to this one, then first to this one node, then first to this one node, then it has to go forward it over to the cloud for further processing. So like this way, the mallet can be used in the agriculture environment, in the traffic monitoring, in the security, 
agriculture as well as in the forest area. Now the second application lies on the military environment. So in the military environment, if you talk about the vessels, related to the military and uh, you want to perform the communication between the two vessels then the manage can be done like uh, there are very few vessels over the military environment and there is you know, so much traffic over there so when there is so uh, no not so traffic and a particular vessel is communicated to this one such that the security can be maintained and uh, the path can be maintained so the mobile network, network will come into account in that particular scenario. Then headquarters plays. Because the military are positioned toward the remote uh, locations area like the Jammu and Kashmir, in which the connectivity is very, very less at the mountain top areas. So here, when there is a message passing facility, it has to be provided from the headquarters to the particular soldier, the political, a particular military camp, then the mobile network network will come into account. This is because it has a very short range communication and the data can be transferred efficiently when there is a less number of uh, nodes in the network. Also, if there is any mission going on of the military, and the soldiers are situated at the different, different places at the particular environment. But these places are localized. So we can use soldier to soldier communication by using the mobile ad hoc network. Now the application lies on also the emergency situation. So in the emergency applications like the natural disaster. So one project is going on at the University of Santa Clarita regarding this emergency application. So whenever this natural disaster happens in terms of the earthquake or any other an, uh, any another uh, disaster scenario so what happens our earth's magnetic field is getting interrupted and there is no communication has to be happen between the 10 to 20 or sometimes 30 minutes so in that case what should be the protocol and what should be the communication mechanism the population or the citizen has to be used in order to cope up with the these type of accidents so these type of scenarios and the project is going on at the university of santa florida so the solution of this is deployment of the delay toller network or you can say sometimes this is ISIN that is information center network or the delay toller network. So it is one of the existing area. Also in the accident events in the highway some what there is accident happens and as you know in the highway because in the India the highway is also under comes in the category of worst environment nowadays. But at the foreign culture, the highway is so empty. So there is only one vehicle in the duration of uh, one to two hours or three hours. So whenever there is accident happen on the road, that uh, this managed protocol can be used in order to provide the communication. Because in the roadside, there is RFU is equipped. So the mobile phone that is used by the driver, it has to be communicated with the RFU on the happening of accident and this RSC will communicate with the nearby hospital or emergency services and in the duration of uh, two to three minutes all of the facilities will be provided by the emergency services to those people. So by using the managed environment can be resolved. Also the earthquake so this point is already covered by me. Now these are the three important applications. Now from the application we have uh, 
making some interest toward this uh, mobile ad hoc network but uh, what are the design issues over there so the first is uh, design issue is network size and low density this is called network many design issues so network size and low density so regarding this point when you are want to design manage environment for a particular application so the first point arise the network size means how much area you have to cover by using the mobile ad hoc network now the second one is load density so load density means after the coverage how many number of nodes you will need it in order to cover that particular area suppose if the node density is very very high and if you want to cover a large area means coverage is large and number of nodes is also getting large so in both cases when network size and network density both are large then clustering technique has to be utilized like the forest area you can see in the forest area there are so many animals and the forest area range is also very high so in that case a lot of sensors has been deployed in the different different areas in order to cover that particular large area and after the deployment you have to apply the clustering technique so in the clustering technique what happens the cluster has to be made like this way and under this cluster there are so many sensor nodes so the responsibility of this sensor node is to sense the radiation pattern if i am talking about the application of forest area so whenever the radiation is uh, thermal radiation is getting captured by this one so it has to be forwarded towards the gateway node this is the gateway node or you can say the cluster head so the responsibility of this cluster head is to data collection not the processing only the data collection data collection from the different sensors and another one is forwarding towards the base station or you can say the cloud environment for further processing and also how this cluster hot net is selected so uh, selection of this cluster hat node implies so many types of algorithm over the wireless sensor network like the list protocol and so many else so this is not the part of the syllabus that we are not covering but for the idea point of view i will say that these nodes are the nodes which have greater battery source greater uh, processing power as compared to the another node and sometimes when all of the nodes having the same capability then you have to select the cluster head among the nodes on the turn basis like for that duration this one will be, be become the cluster head and after uh, one day this node will become the cluster head so like this on the turn basis the cluster head node has to be maintained over each cluster now the question is in this where is the mobile ad hoc network because all of the sensors are forwarding data to this one actually this is not happening directly when there is a sensor and it has some data to send 
so once it is the range or the processing capability is compatible with this one to send the data then it will directly forward this one otherwise it has to forward to a long route like this node to this node and this node will forward to this one so here the mobile odoc network takes place now the another design issue is called the connectivity So in the connectivity, we have to kind count out how many number of incident nodes how many number of nodes are centralized, just like the cluster head. And one node is connected to this node by the wireless feature, but what means virtual capacity. One is what are the coordinates of that node? I know these coordinates are temporary because nodes are free to move at any location. But I am talking about the particular application like the agriculture or the forest area in which the nodes are sensor nodes are fixed equipped at a particular location so these terms as a coordinates so according to the coordinates about how much uh, distance another node should be equipped this point has to be uh, provide you the facility also now the network topology is one of the design issues So in the network topology, the first one is how to know the topology. It is okay that one node can uh, see the presence of uh, one hope neighborhood node by using the beacons, hello message or the eco packets. But what about the another nodes in the topology because forwarding of a particular packet needs routing protocol. And routing will carry other nodes in the network. So how to know the topology in that case. So the dynamic routing you have to utilize in terms of this dynamic topology change in the minus environment. Means according to the topology change or after some duration of time, this routing tables have to be updated by own self automatically. Now the major issue is how to mitigate the battery problem. Because if uh, in the forest area or in case in the agriculture that the sensor nodes are deployed over there, but the battery backup is very very low and you have to collect the data for a for a month or for a week or sometimes for a year then how can you solve this issue resolve this issue that is how to mitigate the battery problems in that environment now the fourth design issue is traffic the traffic generated by the nodes again in order to measure the traffic or perfect load balancing algorithm over there you have to know that how many number of nodes in your environment application area. After that, we can predict that 
according to this notes once and the number of notes are getting known by the administrator then it can predict that how many how much traffic can be generated according to its usage data so how much data is uh, how much traffic is generated but this traffic can be of many types like the traffic of the text type raw data type or the video or image related type so which type of traffic is and sometimes suppose all the nodes are in the active nature then the bursty traffic can be generated as well as large periodic packets can be generated there are so many traffic categories over there now the last design issue of the manet environment is operational environment so what are the operation environment so if you are working on the urban application environment then obviously there is no restriction about the uh, technology because in the urban all the things are available immediately but what about the rural one in the rural one all of the things is not uh, make available to you immediately so for the particular uh, thing for the particular necessity you have to travel a long distance and your operation area is ocean suppose if you are working with the water management system smart water management system under the ocean and uh, you have to utilize the managed environment over there so what are the constraints over there what are the demand advantages what are the things you have to meet in order to decide the sensors inside the ocean that things you have to take into care what about the forest environment so forest environment i already explained so i will not explain again then when you are working with the mountain area so in the mountain area in order to perform the communication from one node to another node or from one node to the uh, cloud server or one node to the base station the major is you have to maintain the address that is called the line of sight so when there is a direct line of sight between the two nodes like the one node and the base station then the packet transfer can be done very fastly without the packet loss happening at the communication but in case when there is uh, not a direct line of sight because suppose your base station is over there and there is one mountain over there and your node is situated over this agriculture area in this village so whenever this particular sensor nodes want to send the data then it will be encrypted by this mountain so this type of things you have to take care when you are uh, working in the mountain area that is called line of sight should be take care so in the continuity with that last but not the least point design in the energy constraint what are the power source the first question is what are the power source also you can see from the another application like the agriculture and the forest area the deployed sensor has to be sense the data as well as it has to forward the data also so means the nodes equipped in the mobile ad hoc network has two functionality 
the first one is the collection and the second one is forward not the collection you can say sensing so that's why each node overhead is getting large So the solution is, in order to save the energy of the sensors, there is a mechanism that is called the sleeping mode. So this sleeping mode utility has to be utilized efficiently such that the uh, sensing nature or the sensing data should not be lost as well as all of the things will be done actively in the perfect manner. So like suppose in the forest area the sensors are deployed and you know in the river park the most of the animals are going to take a, to for drinking of the water. So that's why it has this sensor has to be invoked all the day but all of the sensor has to be invoked for the particular duration and rest of the duration it has to be entered into the sleeping mode. So like this way all of the things you have to take in care when you are building one application over the mobile network network. So this is all about the today's topic. In the next lecture we will start the routing protocols over the mobile network.